You might think I'm exaggerating with this comment, but I am not. Michael Thomas might be my favorite player to watch tape of. Just what he can do on a football field is nothing short of remarkable. I feel like there are just a plethora of receivers right now who you could argue are elite. It seems like there's so many guys you could say that should be the best receiver in football. That guy should be in the conversation the best receiver in the football. But there's just so many guys, it's kind of hard to really say because there is such a plethora of talent at the wide receiver position right now. I mean, you have DeAndre Hopkins, you have Julio Jones, you obviously have Michael Thomas, who I'm talking about. And there's even some other guys, Odell Beckham Jr., you got Antonio Brown if he was still in the league, although he is not, so I guess we can't really count him. But, you know, there's Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams. The list goes on and on of all of these great receivers. And it's almost like for a guy like Michael Thomas... He kind of just gets overlooked because he's not necessarily one of those guys who can simply say, that's what he's great at. You know, for Hill, it's his speed. For Mike Evans, it's his height. For Odell Beckham Jr., it's his ability to move after getting the catch. But for Michael Thomas, who just does every little thing so well, it's hard to really say just one sentence about what makes him great because there are so many things that make him great. Like, let's just get into those things. And one of the ways he can be truly effective is against man coverage, which is obviously good news when they go up against Tampa Bay because obviously Tampa Bay plays a lot of man coverage. So in this situation, for example, he is going to be in man coverage. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup right there. And one thing I want you to take a look at is right after the ball is snapped, notice how many moves Michael Thomas is going to make. It's like his feet are moving so furiously quickly, you have absolutely no clue where he's going. I mean, at this point, try to take a guess as to which direction he's going. Is he going to the left? Is he going to the right? Is he going to be, you know, cutting in, out, just going deep? You have no clue of knowing if you're a defensive player. You pretty much just have to stay with him and hope he doesn't cut because then you're screwed. So when he does finally move a little bit deeper to where his route is going to be, it looks like there's still not that much separation, but this is actually a great situation for Thomas. This is what Thomas wants right here. Because it is true, there isn't a ton of separation in between them. They're pretty close, but he doesn't need a ton of separation. What he needs is for the defensive player to not know where the ball is. And what I mean by that is if you look at that Tampa Bay player who's in charge of covering him, he's basically just facing towards the sideline on the bottom half of the screen because he's not exactly sure what this route is. It looks like a fade route at this point, so he's trying to take that, take that away if he can. But that's not what's going to happen. Instead, Breeze is going to hit him a little bit closer to the middle of the field. And so because of this, watch how he can so easily shift his body weight while on the move, get in front of that defensive player, and make the catch. I mean, every step of the way on that play should be taught in football school. You know, that should be taught when you're teaching a young player how to play football. Because he's just such a technically perfect receiver, and he can also pull off every step, which is not easy to do. He makes the moves at the line, and then he doesn't give anything away. He doesn't let you know which route he's running. And then he also has the wherewithal to shift his body weight over when he sees the ball in the air to make sure it's an easier catch for him. It's just a fantastic display of good route running. That's really what it comes down to. And this next one's maybe even a better one. The way it's going to work for Tampa Bay is it's going to be a cover one play, so it's man coverage. And what the Saints are going to be doing is they're going to have their two receivers on the top half of the screen run those two routes right there. And that'll be Thomas's route. So it's already a good situation for the Saints. They're going to have Michael Thomas having a one-on-one -on -one matchup, which is what you want. It's, you know, one-on-one -on -one matchup in the end zone for Michael Thomas. Breeze is going to throw it there just about every single time, because why wouldn't you? But Michael Thomas is going to show a display of fantastic football IQ right here. Watch what he's going to do. He's going to start off running this route very slowly, which might seem like, why would you want to do that? Don't you want to get to the situation where you're going to be in a one-on-one -on -one matchup as quickly as possible? But the reason he's doing this is because of that New Orleans player right over there. As you see, he's running his route over the middle, and so if Thomas can time this perfectly, he can force the defensive back who's in charge of covering him to then run into his teammate, which would essentially almost create a rub route in reverse, which would allow Thomas to get wide open. And watch how well it works out. It's just perfectly timed, which creates the contact. Thomas gets wide open in the end zone and is able to score a touchdown. It's it's really that simple. I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't say it's that simple. It's actually incredibly complicated, but it's it, he makes it look simple because of how effective he can do it. I mean, honestly, how many receivers would even think of trying to do something like that? Not many, but his football IQ is clearly off the charts, and he's able to make a make a a pretty good catch as well. And I also feel like just at this point, the fear that he puts on opposing defensive players also comes into play. Like on this one, if you notice, look at how far away his assigned defensive back is playing, which is key because that's the route Thomas is running, which is 
going to be great since there is a lot of space. If you're playing this softly off of him, then you're probably not going to be in a good shape, and as you see, once the ball is snapped, Thomas is easily able to get open because his assigned man was just playing too far off of him, but you also kind of understand why he's playing so far off of him, because Thomas can beat you in like 87 different ways, and you don't want to get burned deep. But at the same time, you can't really worry about that too much. You have to focus on just not getting beat in general, and that's kind of why Thomas is able to get so many catches, because he is just such a headache to try to play against. I mean, he's unstoppable. You know, one of the biggest criticisms he does get is the fact that since he plays for, you know, the team that has Drew Brees, that's kind of why his stats are so good. Yeah, sure, he's a great player, but also it helps that Brees can fit the ball through tight windows, and of course that helps. I mean, we'd be delusional to say that that's not a factor, but I think what helps him more is just the fact that he's a great player and that's been shown by the way that even without Drew Brees he still put up great numbers. In fact he's statistically having his best season in a season where Drew Brees hasn't played most of it so I do think at this point he has proven that it's not just Drew Brees he's not a product of the Saints offense he's a really good player. And I also should be clear it's not just that he does the little things right it's not just that he's a high IQ player it's also the fact that he's a very talented player like on this one, it's going to be a cover three zone, and what the Saints are going to do is they're going to have the receiver on the bottom half of the screen just run a go route, but then Thomas will be running that route right there. So basically what this means is that the defensive player who's in charge of covering the zone on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, he's going to have to play deep to cover the go route. And also, since Tampa Bay is expecting a run here, their defensive players are going to be playing a lot closer to the middle of the field than you typically would if it was expecting a pass here especially on the bottom half of the screen where there's only one player who's down there. So for Thomas, he could potentially get by everybody. But of course, the downside here is that it's going to take Thomas a second to get down there because, I mean, it's just a long way to run. However, even despite that, Thomas is going to get there very quickly. Just notice that speed right there. And at this point, he's past the closest Tampa Bay defender, so Breeze can hit him. And Breeze also hits him in a perfect spot where he's able to pick up as many yards after the catch. And it was just... A really good play by Thomas, also a great throw by Breeze, and just a good concept by the Saints. I mean, everything worked on that play, and more often than not, everything has to work for these plays to work out. That's why football is called the ultimate team game, and it worked out there pretty well. And I also think it should be mentioned, while we talk about how against man coverage he can eat you alive, so you might say, well, maybe try some zone, but... Honestly, that's 10 times worse. Because what you will do if you're going up against zone is sometimes you'll have just some favorable matchups. Like on this one, it's going to be a cover two zone that Tampa Bay is in. And for Michael Thomas, that's his route. So it's a very simple short route to try to just gain some yards. So nothing really too fancy. But what's actually key here is who's going to be in the zone that Thomas is running into. And that's going to be Devin White, a linebacker. I mean, if you have a linebacker out there, you might as well just have me out there trying to guard Michael Thomas because it's going to have the same effect. It's not going to work. Once again, you'll see Michael Thomas make several moves, and at this point, Devin White doesn't really know what's going to happen. He's kind of cheating a little bit to the inside of the field, and I wouldn't even be shocked if for Breeze and Thomas, they're kind of, this is an option route where Thomas could go either way. I could definitely see that happening. But either way, the second Thomas cuts down, Breeze is able to hit him, and then Thomas is able to continue running and pick up the first down. I'm not going to blame White there. I mean, going up against a linebacker, Michael Thomas should win that matchup 10 out of 10 times, and he does win that matchup 10 out of 10 times. So, as much as he is infuriating against man coverage, you pretty much have to play man against the Saints, because if you don't, well, they can just to completely destroy you in zone and then of course if you play a lot of man well then they can destroy you with Kamara so the Saints are pretty much just an unstoppable object when they're playing at their best there's been times where they haven't played at their best I think we saw Drew Brees have a bad game against the Falcons that can really struggle them in certain ways but when they're playing at their best there's no doubt about it they are one of the most unstoppable team in the NFL I feel like the game for Thomas gets almost too easy sometimes. Like, on this one, it's going to be a cover one blitz right here, and that's Thomas's route, which is great against the cover one blitz. But watch how easy of a route this is going to be for him. Watch how his first step, he kind of fakes as though maybe he's going to the top half of the screen, and just doing a fake in general, again, Thomas makes so many fakes at the line, it's kind of hard to tell exactly where he's going to go and exactly when he's going to run it. And so as a defender, you might be thinking, well, hey, this is just one of his 87 fakes before he actually goes off. But the problem is, he can accelerate so quickly, the second he starts running, he just gets wide open. 
because of all of those moves he'll make at the beginning of these routes. Sometimes when he doesn't make those moves, it makes it even easier for him to get open. Again, his Twitter handle is can't guard Mike, and you really can't guard Mike. It kind of feels like we're living in the age of the wide receiver, but, you know, in terms of the age of the wide receiver, we gotta talk about the great ones, and Michael Thomas certainly is great so far in his young NFL career. He's certainly a lot of fun to watch. I enjoy watching him play. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and as always, thanks for watching.